Okay guys, welcome back to the layout. Uh, today we're doing the Othern uh, slash Walther's AMD 103. Uh, it's either a P40 or a P42. I think it's the 42. Anyway, we're going to do a DCC install on this today. Uh, we're going to do some custom sounds and we're going to do some custom lighting. And what we're going to do when we're all done is we're going to add uh, LED headlights, stitch lights, and the red uh, backup lights or tail lights to the front of this locomotive. And what we're going to be doing or using today, as usual, will be uh, Digitrax products. I would normally use a DH-165AO for Othern or Atlas locomotives. Uh, when I went to the hobby store, oh I don't know, a month or so ago, they were out, so I got the KO. Uh, almost the exact same uh, decoder. They have the little prongs at the end, which you'd use for the Kato uh, application. I'll either uh, cut those off or remove those. And it has a couple little prongs here for the Kato uh, motor pickups, which I'll just uh, leave there. I'm not going to use them. Otherwise, it's the exact same decoder as the AO uh, decoder. I'll also be using the SFX004 Sambug and a Soundtrax. Uh, two watt uh, mega bass speaker and we'll put that in the rear of the locomotive and uh, when we're all done it all should uh, look pretty good and we'll see how it goes okay guys the next step as usual is removing the shell uh, I did remove the coupler boxes but in this case you don't really need to I just have an easier time on doing it and keep in mind this is an Othern so it is easy to uh, <laughs> lose small pieces. I'm, I think I'm lucky this one will glue right back on. This is an air tank that goes right under here. And if you wanted to, there's a dummy clip I've already taken off, but you could take the dummy clip off, you could put a decoder like this in, and this would just get you basic DCC functions and light functions that you can put that on, put the shell back on, uh, and be ready to go without you know doing any of the sound or any of the stuff that we're going to do today. And you don't have to use Digitrax, you can use MRC, you can use uh, uh, Soundtrax. And if it doesn't fit by resting it here on top, you may need to pull it back like this. And rest it here where my finger's at. Uh, set it here above the truck and then maybe black out the windows. I'm going to do that anyway for this install to cover some of the lights. Uh, and it probably will fit a lot better if you do it like that. So uh, since we're doing a full board replacement, what we're going to do is remove this whole board and after that I'm going to remove the stock lights. I'm not going to need those any longer uh, because I'm replacing them with LEDs. And to do that we're basically going to remove these little clips. I got one started here. And remove the wires uh, from each of the uh, little prongs here in the stock light board just like that. Just be careful with them. You can put those off to the side. I'm going to do that going all the way around and then the board is just going to wiggle off and basically come right off after that. Okay, as you start to take off the stock light board, it's held on by a little clip. There we go. That provides current from the board to the mechanism. And if you look at the replacement board, it doesn't have that clip. So what we're going to need to do is take a wire. I use orange. It's the correct color wire for this. And I'm going to solder it to the top of this and to the left prong on the uh, replacement board. And then I'm going to put some uh, either adhesive or electrical tape on top of that to secure the board to the top where the stock board was, but also not allowing uh, external contact from the new board to the top of the mechanism. Okay guys, this is the top part of the uh, replacement board. If it doesn't look like this, you've got it on upside down. Flip it around before you get going any further. And this part here where the sound bug plugs into, this is the uh, rear of the locomotive and this is the front of the locomotive. Now if you look here, I've soldered in the orange wire, like I just said, to the top of the mechanism. And I've put some 3M adhesive up in here to secure the board uh, to the mechanism. You can use electrical tape. I've done that many a times. And I've soldered it to the left prong and I've already 
place the existing wire which was here which goes to the bottom of the motor this guy here and I'm going to solder that one to the top and I'm basically going to repeat the process for uh, the truck pickups on either side before I get to any of the lights and, uh, and then we'll do a test run now if you didn't want to solder it you wanted to use uh, the clips that uh, came on the uh, stock uh, light board you're certainly welcome to do that the solder is a better uh, connection but either way is okay okay guys we have the engine up on the layout don't mind the background noise I have a few other engines running this is what the replacement board looks like with the rest of the wires on there you have track pickup here and track pickup here which does the uh, engineer side you have track pickup here for the fireman side which is really screwed into the frame and that seems to work out pretty well you have the wire we added for the mechanism on the top and one that was already there for the bottom for current going to the motor mechanism and those have been soldered in here and I have my throttle ready I have locomotive 3 here on the left side and we'll give it a little bit of juice <clears throat> and it seems to work pretty good we'll try the other direction alright, a oh, little noise, I'll have to break it in a little bit now since I have it here I'll do a little bit of basic programming I will hit the program key and I'm going to change the address. The road number for this is 67. Now this is a two digit address. If I were to click this up here, there it goes. It'll make it a four digit address. But since we're doing just two digits, I'm going to kick it up to 67 or you can just use the keypad. Since I'm doing this one handed. Uh, I'll do it like that. Hit the enter key and it'll give me a message saying it's good. And once I exit out of here, I try using the address 3, it's not going to do anything because it's no longer 3. It is now 67. Sorry about that. Again, I'm doing this one handed. And there we go. And I'll probably do some basic momentum on this since it's here. Uh, normally I start with a value of 40 for both the momentum going up and down. Uh, it's a good starting value and I can uh, tweak it from there. So what I'll do is I'll go to again program. And again I want engine 67. CV3 is the momentum going up. And I'll make that a value of 40 and I'll hit the enter key good and I'll do the same thing for CV4 which is the momentum going down and again bear with me shaking the remote here or the controller or the throttle I'm doing this one handed I'm going to exit out of that and now when I pick this up it's a lot slower it's not flying off the rails there it's a nice crawl and the same thing when I stop it. So I've done some other videos in part four of the series where I talked about momentum and uh, address changing. This is just kind of a quick review. Just to give you guys an idea. Normally I wouldn't start off that high, but just to give you an idea how well it does with the momentum. And if you want to add more or less, you can bring that value up or down some. That's just where my starting point is. And now we'll move on to the lighting. Okay, guys, the next thing to do is to prep the shell. What I've done is I've removed the rear lights and the front headlights. And I'm not sure how well the camera's picking it up. I've also taped off or blackened out the windows in the front of the cab. If you have a different method you guys would like to do with paint or marker or something, uh, feel free. Uh, but the electrical tape seems to do a pretty good job. It's not perfect. You can kind of see that it's there, but it, it works okay. 
and then the next thing that I have done is I've drilled out, you can kind of see there in the front, uh, the various different holes for the ditch lights, backup lights, and headlights on the front of the uh, shell here. And I've used a, uh, I don't remember, a 564 bit. Now the two millimeter LEDs, I should have shown this earlier, and they look like this. I've gotten these from uh, ledswitch.com uh, or you can Google two millimeter LEDs and you can find the site. Um, if you have a more precise measurement for a drill bit, uh, feel free to use that, but this seems to work out pretty good. Now, if you can see, there's a little bit of imperfection in the paint left by the drill bit. I have found that the testers uh, C blue, there's the part number, is a pretty close match to the blue on the Phase 5 locomotives. It's not perfect, but just a little bit of dab around the headlights and, uh, and uh, the other lights that are there uh, uh, seem to clean it up pretty nicely and uh, makes it look a lot cleaner. So. Okay guys, just a real quick demonstration of how I uh, wire up my LEDs. Now this is the 2 millimeter LED that you can get from ledswitch.com. There's an anode side and a cathode side. The cathode side is a shorter side and that's where you want to hook up your resistor. This is a 680 ohm half watt resistor you can get from your local radio shack. You can go as low as quarter watt if you like but the half watt works just fine. And from there you want to hook up your function wire, in this case it's white for the front headlight and your blue which is your common positive comes in on the longer uh, cathode side of the LED. Now once we have all that, I'll just move this out of the way for a sec. I have one that's already partially wired up and that's what it looks like when you cut everything down so it'll fit in the cab a little bit better and make sure you leave some longer leads so you can get up into the shell and up over the front truck. And additionally, I'll size up some uh, heat shrink tubing and I'll just cover up from this part of the LED and just beyond the resistor uh, just to keep from accidental contact from the two wires uh, that could maybe touch each other once you get everything mounted in. And one more example would be this one. Now the colors are different because these are the red ones for the backup lights. And I've used a yellow wire to indicate that it's the rear, or what would be the rear headlight, and again the blue wire for the common positive. And I've simply, in hooking the two of them up, I've daisy chained the yellow and blue wires up to the second LED, and then they will go out to the um, replacement board that we hooked up just a moment ago. Okay, before you seat your LEDs inside the locomotive shell, uh, you're going to want to test fit them, uh, make sure that uh, they look okay inside the shell of the locomotive. If you look at that one there, it's sticking out pretty far. I haven't done anything to this one yet. So what I'll do is I'll take that out and I'll shave off. I've been doing about halfway, uh, which is about, you know, here or so, uh, with my Dremel and just giving a little sand uh, before I put them in permanently and that sets them up flush or recessed in just a little bit if you want to take more precise measurements you can certainly do that but uh, I eyeball it and it seems to come out pretty well so after that I will just use some uh, testers glue and uh, this seems to hold pretty well uh, if you want to do something a little bit tighter uh, like CA glue or super glue it can be a little bit messier, uh, but it'll hold a lot better. Uh, so you'll need to make your own decision on what you, you want to use to uh, uh, hold your LED inside the shell. But either one's okay. Uh, just know what you're getting into when you use a super glue, that's all.